The ongoing economic downturn in China has led to tight local finances, resulting in an expanding wave of salary reductions. From teachers to white-collar professionals and even to those in the banking and public sectors, incomes are shrinking. Recently, this trend has reached the healthcare industry with Beijing hospitals, including the prestigious Peking Union Medical College Hospital, announcing a 50% salary cut for all medical staff. Salary crunch hits China doctors' bonuses halved. White-collar workers and public servants face tough times. The sudden reduction has sparked discontent among doctors, prompting complaints and appeals. A senior physician revealed that while night shift allowances were paid, performance bonuses were slashed by half, raising concerns about future deductions. Hospitals in China, often considered lucrative entities, are now among the last to be hit by this salary reduction wave. A Beijing resident, Wang Li, commented on the financial struggle. Basically, there's no money left. Even major real estate companies are struggling. Following the financial crises of real estate giants, the technology and finance industries have also been unable to shield employees from the economic chill. Some reports suggest that senior Chinese bankers are experiencing salary cuts of up to 40 percent. China's top investment bank, Satic Securities, has already trimmed the basic salaries of some bankers by 15 percent. Data compiled by Xiaopin Limited indicates that recruiting salaries in Shanghai and Beijing saw a year-on-year -year decrease of 9 percent and 6 percent, respectively, in the second quarter of this year, marking the largest drop since 2015. In a time when the government is hesitant to release youth unemployment rates, for many white-collar workers, a salary cut is preferred over the prospect of unemployment. A recruiter from a Shanghai technology headhunting firm noted that many laid-off individuals are willing to accept up to a 50% salary cut to secure a new position. Government officials, once considered to have secure jobs, have also faced a wave of salary reductions over the past year. In Hebei province near Beijing, many local governments are struggling to make ends meet. In a financial report from Zhangjiaku City's Shanghai County, budget income was only 750 million CNY, while expenditures reached a staggering 3.1 billion CNY. Over the past year, news of salary reductions for public servants has emerged in various regions, including Zhejiang, Jiangsu, Guangdong, and Shanghai. In Shanghai, lower-level public servants and employees in state-owned enterprises have witnessed significant cuts in their year-end bonuses, dropping from an average of 50 to 60,000 CNY to just 1 or 2,000 CNY. Sparks of rebellion unpaid power workers demand fair compensation. In January 2024, a video circulated online allegedly showing employees of a Chinese power supply bureau protesting for unpaid wages. In the video, dozens of people, including men and women, some possibly wearing electrician uniforms, marched on the streets carrying banners that read, Power Supply Bureau Employees Demand Wages and Return Our Hard-Earned Money. The exact time and location of the incident couldn't be verified from the video. Some netizens expressed disbelief, considering the Power Supply Bureau as one of the richest departments within the Chinese communist system. They questioned how a Power Supply Bureau could fail to pay salaries. Others speculated that due to the rising fuel prices and the economic downturn, there might be limited power supply by the end of the year, leading to possible wage delays. Some sarcastically commented that even robbers were demanding unpaid wages and mocked the situation, noting the continuous increase in electricity usage by households in China. The video sparked discussions on social media, highlighting the financial challenges and economic decline in China, with many factories and businesses closing down. The overall economic impact, combined with the ongoing pandemic and questionable official data, has fueled skepticism among the Chinese public. Wage woes spread. Teachers across China experience salary reductions and payment delays. 
Furthermore, reports of delayed payment of salaries for teachers in several universities and difficulties in reimbursing research funds have sparked hot discussions. On January 9th, Changsha University of Science and Technology's Finance Department officially announced on its website that the January salaries originally scheduled for the 10th would be delayed due to the yet-to-be-released financial indicators for the beginning of the year. On January 8th, the Finance Department of Guangxi Normal University issued a notice stating that, due to the temporary unavailability of the regional treasury system and with no budget indicators issued, salaries for January would be temporarily withheld. This notice was later deleted. Additionally, a video uploaded by a netizen on January 7th showed workers protesting for unpaid wages for over six months on a construction project at Nankai University in Chongqing. Numerous workers gathered outside the university, demanding their wages, and the protest continued until nightfall with security personnel present. People from various regions shared their experiences online, with some claiming salary delays for several months, while others mentioned the challenges in reimbursing examination fees. A vice professor at a university in Shandong mentioned that although salaries could still be paid, reimbursing research funds had become increasingly difficult. He explained that only a portion of the funds would be reimbursed after the payment of tuition fees by new students in September, and the majority remained unpaid as the university's finance department claimed there was no money in the account. He further highlighted that subsidies for graduate students could no longer be reimbursed, and the six graduate students he supervised had not received subsidies for the entire previous year. Additionally, a private business owner mentioned collaboration on a project with a university, but the project payment of over 10,000 yuan had not been received for a year, with the university claiming a lack of funds. The economic downturn in China has led to financial difficulties in local governments, and reports of salary reductions for teachers in various locations emerged in November 2023. The news of salary reductions for eight categories of individuals, including senior management, state-owned enterprise leaders, bank executives, university teachers, senior medical professionals, legal experts, civil servants, and those with excessive salaries, circulated online on November 1, 2023. The purpose was to alleviate economic pressure and balance fiscal expenditure. However, this information was suppressed. Many netizens in China shared their experiences of salary reductions on various online platforms. In October, a prominent user disclosed that teachers in Shenzhen faced a drastic salary reduction, with annual salaries dropping by 80,000 to 100,000 yuan. Many of these teachers held paid B and master's degrees from top universities such as Peking University and Tsinghua University. This revelation sparked concern among teachers, and netizens commented that the salary reductions were not limited to teachers, but also affected other positions within the system, including doctors and employees in public institutions. Netizens also remarked that the Chinese Communist Party, CCP, suppressed information about salary reductions and unemployment, making it difficult for such news to be disseminated. The term unemployment is reportedly censored on major online platforms, reflecting the severity of unemployment issues in the country. Shandong Shocker, Widespread Salary Cuts Plunge Public Workers into Financial Crisis After Jiangxi, Shandong Province is reportedly implementing a general salary reduction for public institutions. Last month, there were widespread rumors online about a general salary reduction for government and public institution employees in Jiangxi province. The authorities hastily attempted to debunk the rumors, but netizens remained skeptical. Recently, there have been online rumors about Shandong province issuing orders for a universal salary reduction for all public institution employees. The reduction is said to be effective from the end of January, with the implementation starting in February. The informant alleges a reduction range of 25% to 35%, affecting various professions, including teachers and community workers. Community workers will reportedly receive only basic living allowances, and all project payments will be suspended. Hospitals will cease accepting any commitments. However, efforts will be made to avoid delaying teacher salaries. 
The informant mentions the formation of a salary reduction group within their unit. They express the belief that the provincial government is facing financial difficulties at the year end, prompting these austerity measures. When asked if all Shandong governments are short of money, the informant replies, Only Lixia, Lixia district in Jinan, the capital of Shandong province, still has some money. This information has attracted attention on the X platform, formerly Twitter, with netizens commenting, Shandong is still a relatively wealthy province, it's unimaginable for poorer provinces, and this phenomenon may become commonplace in the communist regime. They promise to prioritize teacher salaries, but they might be the first to control them. Another comment reads, The hard times promised by Xi Jinping have begun. Dear people behind the Great Firewall, are you ready? Last month, similar news surfaced about a salary reduction for government and public institution employees in Jiangxi province. A screenshot circulated online claiming that the Jiangxi provincial government had decided to adjust remuneration for all government and public institution employees in the province. Netizens speculated that Jiangxi is firing the first shot in the salary reduction policy reform. Subsequently, Jiangxi officials officially declared the above information as rumors through mainland media. However, local netizens did not believe the official debunking, and many shared their own accounts of salary reductions for government and public institution employees. One Jiangxi netizen commented, Are you, the government, sure it's a rumor? My performance pay of 1,600 yuan will be gone next month. Another Jiangxi netizen stated, My sister is in Nanchang, and she has already had a reduction of over a thousand yuan. Netizens from other provinces also commented, revealing salary reduction information for government employees in their respective regions. Throughout last year, news of salary reductions for government employees has been reported from various parts of mainland China. In some economically challenged provinces in the northeast, west, and south, teachers experiencing delayed salary payments have become a regular occurrence. There are even instances where public security bureaus in certain cities are unable to pay salaries. CCP's stability at stake, military faces concerns over pay cuts. The latest information indicates that even serving members of the Chinese Communist Party, CCP, are now experiencing salary reductions. Mr. Hua, a retiree who served in the CCP's military, disclosed that after retiring and venturing into business, local finances were in deficit. Not only were government officials unable to pay salaries on time, but subsidies for the military were also cancelled. Chinese military veteran Mr. Hua, voice altered, including the salaries of many government officials and the pensions of retired individuals, they are not being paid on time. Everything is being delayed. It's the same for state-owned enterprises and even in the military. Many subsidies for those still serving in the military haven't been dispersed for half a year. Chinese military veteran Ms. Bai, all industries are collapsing and the contraction is severe. Salary reduction is a widespread phenomenon in China. The police force is like the capillary within the CCP's stability maintenance system. If police salaries are reduced, it's guaranteed that the military will also face a 100% reduction. Chairman of the National Committee of the China Democratic Party Wang Juntao, many of China's subsidies are welfare, and these are localist policies. If a person's salary is still intact, it means that, as a soldier, their statutory income is guaranteed. But there are other subsidies, which are benefits from the unit and are subject to frequent changes. If local finances are tight, they won't be given. Chinese political commentator Chen Pokong pointed out that the salary reduction trend, starting with government officials, has now spread to the military. Coupled with the ongoing CCP high-level purge, it has left everyone feeling insecure. Chinese political commentator Chen Pokong, many reports suggest that it's dangerous because the current state of the CCP's military is unstable due to the ongoing high-level purges. 
Now, with salary reductions, frozen subsidies, and news from the families of military officials, soldiers are in a state of anxiety. There could even be a military revolt at any time, because high-ranking officers are being eliminated one by one, creating an atmosphere of fear among everyone. Economic downturn and tough living conditions, unusual recognition of challenges by CCP. Tensions in China's economy, marked by contraction in the manufacturing sector, deflationary pressures, and challenges in people's livelihoods, have prompted a rare admission of economic difficulties from the Chinese Communist Party leadership. The party leader acknowledged operational pressures on some enterprises and difficulties in employment and daily life for the public. This cautious tone indicates an anticipation of more economic challenges in the coming year. In December, China's Purchasing Managers Index (PMI) for the manufacturing sector continued its third consecutive month of contraction, with a reading of 49, reflecting economic decline. Additionally, the Consumer Price Index (CPI) showed persistent weakness, with a year-on-year -year decline of 0.5 percent in November, indicating a faster rate of decrease compared to October. The fourth quarter of the previous year saw a 1.3 percent year-on-year reduction in average wages provided by enterprises in 38 major cities, the largest decline since 2016, reflecting economic hardships. Observers point out that the Chinese authorities are likely to manipulate GDP growth data to meet the annual growth target, but the challenges faced by ordinary citizens are becoming more apparent. The return of migrant workers to their hometowns due to the closure of some processing and manufacturing businesses is affecting local economies. Reports also indicate that public servants and institutional employees are facing salary reductions, and in some regions, there is encouragement for government officials to explore entrepreneurial opportunities. Various sectors, including industry, foreign trade, real estate development, education, and platform enterprises, are experiencing significant setbacks. The overall economic contraction is evident, raising concerns among the public and affecting their confidence. Economic data, including references to insufficient effective demand, weak social expectations, and blockages in the domestic cycle, as highlighted in the recent Central Economic Work Conference, affirm the existing economic challenges. The lack of confidence among the population is contributing to weakened demand, impacting corporate profits, raising financing costs, reducing private investment willingness, and further affecting consumer confidence and economic recovery. Global financial institutions such as the World Bank and Moody's forecast a decline in China's GDP growth to around 4.5 percent and 4 percent for the next two years, respectively, with a further slowdown to 3.8 percent.